join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him. Or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. In this episode of The Ultimate Shot, we will prove that hunting can ensure the viability of wildlife management as we travel to Ethiopia to be the first bow hunters of one of Africa's most coveted trophies, the elusive Mountain Inyala. We're just backtracking now from where the Inyala fell. The mud hole we were standing. Just trying to look for the, the tip of the fletching of the arrow that was sticking out with a little light on it. Uh, just trying to keep this. You can see where this is where he came up. Came through here, rubbed against a couple trees here, so most likely he'll have broken off rubbing against one of these trees. He was hit on the left side, so it should be somewhere in these trees. That's where he was standing. There it is. There it is. Look at that. Broke off on the tree. That's the tip of the arrow. That's what was sticking out. That's what broke off in the tree here. Archie's gonna be thrilled we found that. Cool. All right. There you are. Well, there it is. There's my trophy. <laughs> well, isn't that something, eh? Right now we're in Addis Ababa, which is the capital of Ethiopia. And tomorrow morning we'll be chartering a plane down to a town called Robe, and from there driving about an hour up to our Odobulu camp, which is our concession up in the Bali Mountains, one of our two concessions. After we finish hunting the mountain, we're going to go into the Ethiopian National Museum here, and we're going to see Lucy. And Lucy's uh, 2.3 million years old, the oldest uh, fossilized human uh, remains ever found. This is our modern ancestor here. Actually, it's the ancient uh, skull found here uh, dating back 160,000 years, which uh, scientists say means that uh, humans inhabited Africa 100 to 300,000 years ago. Well, they found 40% of the skeleton of Lucy, and there it is. They estimate that her, it's a female, that's why it's Lucy. Well, we're just coming into the mountains now, so another mile or so we're going to leave all the sun and all the clear sky and we're going to be in the fog and the rain and the cloud. And that's just where we're going to hunt. That's where the Inyala are, the bush buck, the bush pigs and uh, all the species and of course that's where the forest is that's their habitat so uh say goodbye to the sun tony we're heading into the clouds and the fog at camp it's first things first setting up and testing my new bow After several shots at the target and some minor adjustments to my sight and rest, we are ready to go hunting. Millions of acres. In the preserved old growth forest of the highlands of Ethiopia, access of humans has been limited for decades. Logging is not allowed. The saline and spring with water bubbling from the ground show that several species of wildlife are regular users. We can build a blind in the thick cover on the edge and be in bow range. Now we will wait and see what fate has in store for us. 
When I watch a post-production video and see what is reduced to a very few seconds on the screen, I sometimes forget about the time and energy involved, not only in the production process, but in the days and nights, sometimes weeks, in the hunting camp, on the trail, or in the blind. We weathered a day and a half in our perfectly concealed blind and had no success. Despite the thousands of tracks in the mud, we had not seen a single Inyala. We had several opportunities while we were stalking in the forest, but in the end we had no success. The animals were close. Maybe it was location and wind currents that were working against us. We surveyed the topography and decided to change our blind location. We went some 50 yards uphill from the mud pit and we built two blinds for our crew. We did not have to wait long to see if we had made the right move. Oh, sharp little horns they've got though, it's pretty dangerous. Poked you not an right hour there. after the move, the weather started to clear and the first animals appeared. With the abundant fresh water, the lush green grass, and the minerals in the mud, the saline was a magnet. And in the secluded opening, in the thick forest, it was like a paradise for these animals. Now this is another male we haven't seen. He's a really old, scarred up male. He's been fighting recently. Yeah, obviously, maybe he sees one of the other males, the bigger males. It's just a matter of time until there comes the big one now. His neck, also pretty recent, down to his shoulder blade. So he's definitely been in some tussles recently. He's 49 yards. Now that the females are around. goes again. I've only seen about uh, 10, 12 males. And I had two great ones within 49, 50, 48, 49 yards. And I couldn't take the shot. Trees and short, thick brush intertwined with ivy and lianas was an impenetrable jungle that guarded the wild animals against their hunters. The only other thing that these animals needed was water and minerals. Life cannot exist without them. We counted on this, and the proof was that so many animals came to this place. There they come. Now they should give us a shoot. There go the heckles. You see, up goes the tail. Starting to hunch over. The heckles on his back are standing up. Yep. Sizing up the other male, but the big one doesn't really seem interested. It's a little bit of a show, not much. I guess that's the one I should be taking now, should I? No. Well, that's a nice push book. No, there's just, we need to, we can get push book anyway. these animals get used to it here. Maybe that'll bring in some Nialas. But we've actually got five bushbuck males down here, which is neat. That was our first blind, right here at the water hole, right at the mud hole. And we were too close. This winds are swirling in here. And the animals that come close in this thick jungle forest could smell us, could sense that we were here. So they wouldn't come in. We stayed there a day and a half. Tony was in the blind back in here with the camera. But we knew it was wrong, we knew it wasn't gonna work. We needed to get further away and we needed to get downwind where the favorable winds here in the mornings and late afternoons so the animals wouldn't smell us. So we knew this blind wasn't gonna work. We knew we had to get out of this bottom land. We had to get up high. So to get out where the winds are right, to get above the valley floor here, get out of this hole, this basin, we moved uphill. Up to a distance of about 50 yards from the mud hole. 
In the worldwide search for the ultimate shot, adapting to the local conditions and environment has always helped me. In this situation, simply changing our position allowed us to achieve the desired result. Favorable wind condition, and by remaining motionless and fully camoed, we managed to hide ourselves from the sharp senses of the Inyala. The fog, the thick brush in front of me, first became movement, then a dark form, and finally a huge Inyala bull. This was a trophy of a lifetime, and it was now up to me to make this ultimate shot. The tension, the suspense, the pressure of maybe being the first archer ever was indescribable. The hours I had spent crouched under the low-lying thick cover and lying in the wet, muddy hole that the trackers had dug for me had been a real torture for my limbs. And now, at the final moment of truth, my legs refused to obey me. With an unbelievable effort and giving it everything I had to overcome the pain in my muscles, I slowly pulled the heavyweight bow to full draw. When my eyes met the eyes of the Nyala, I was sure that in one quick motion he would disappear into the forest forever. But he was calm, and the seconds ticked by, with the only feeling that remained being that of the live bowstring locked at full draw, and my sight window and fiber optic on his chest, and my trembling desire to release it. Got him. Perfect shot. We're gonna get him. Good shot. Confident, very confident. Let's just sit down, relax. Sit down, relax. Archie. I have my arm guard on and I get this bloody dragon. Archie, it's all right. It got him, it got him low. I know. But it's straight low. I think it's good, yeah. I think it's a good shot. I think you got him right through the heart. God, he's a whopper. He's a beautiful oh. yellow man. <laughs> good job, man. Good job. Boy, he's a big boy. He's oh a beautiful boy. God, he's, he's not man. super long. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 50 yards. 50 yards. 50 yards. Yes, Archie, the first mountain yellow, the bow, man. Archie, what? It's unbelievable. First Mount Yala ever, ever, ever shot with a bow. <laughs> what an act. Look at the faces of Archie, you did it. We did it. Oh. Well, we owe thanks to your dad, too, for. Did you find the broken off? Shaft. 50 yards on you. I told you, you it's a little low. Yeah. But you know, you want right, to go low. Right, right in the heart. Right in the heart. Yeah. His leg was like this when he was standing. That's Remember right. when I told you, right in the crease? Right. And I told you, you went through his heart. Yeah. That is through his, his heart. heart. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Ah. Jeez. What an unbelievable animal. What's unbelievable. That? Huh? What's that? Oh. <laughs> Mountain yellow. Well, it's uh, it's uh, June. No, it's May. What is it? What date is it? June second. <laughs> it's June second, two thousand and seven, uh, and we just made history here. We uh, successfully took the esteemed uh, Ethiopian mountain and yellow. One of the bow. top trophies. Now. That's right. For possibly sure. the top. Prob trophy. Possibly the top trophy. And so we're doing a tremendous uh, Ethiopian-wide hunting experience this trip. One of the first ever to be done, archery yeah. in yeah. Ethiopia. Ethiopia just opened up to archery about four years ago. And uh, never before as a Mount Niala, but two people came before this and both failed to get Mount Nialas and we got it. Yeah. And Archie got it June 2nd today. <laughs> I'm so somebody's, happy to Somebody's got to be first, you so, know. And yeah. I'm glad it was us, boy. Yeah. Let me tell you. and. Uh, you know, just the spectacular mountain yala. You know, so many people get these things mixed up with the southern yala, but this animal is a good 700 pound animal. Big, you know, very hard to hunt, very elusive. This yala is old, bases are heavy, horns are broomed off, almost even broken off at the tips, carries his mass all the way up. I mean, just doesn't get a better specimen than to be the first with a bow. Yeah. This kind of quality yala is. Well, Quite it, an accomplishment. Yeah, it is, and it, it speaks Amazing. for your uh, <laughs> conservation efforts, your area, the, the country, what the country has done to uh, allow these trophies to be protected and to grow and allow the hunters to come in and, and uh, bring in their foreign currency and, and give jobs to people and, and uh, give these animals uh, value and sustained value so that uh, there will always be trophies like this. The rest is probably still inside of I don't think you don't so. think so? You think it broke off too? It came out too. Probably about the same spot. You think it came out? Oh, the arrow had to come out. Really? And you know it's not. It's is that you got the mullahs both out like? The other side. It'll be that long. It'll be this long. You what? You hey 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 hey. You know it's a dynamite uh, broadhead for um, 50 yard shot. You know to do that, go right through them, come out the other side. Good bow too. And thanks to Pete Shepley for sending me last week the X Force bow. Uh, anyway, it's the first leg of our Ethiopian three area hunt, and um, we're on to Bushbuck here. There's thousands of them, and uh, I'm sure we'll get one. And uh, then we're on to Omo, and then Danny to uh, uh, hunt the uh, hippo and the buffalo at the end. So here we go. For Safari Club, you measure the length of the horn around the curve and the base, two measurements. There are three mountain yala that have been recorded with bases 11 inches. This or, is one or, of them. Or larger. Yeah. Or larger. That's one of them. And this is one of them. We're in the really thick part of the rainforest. This is the bedding area for the Inyala. The mud hole and the water are above us. There's little streams going downhill, down the valley here. 
This is where they can hide. This is where they can get away from everybody. And this is why the Inyala is still here in Ethiopia, because these areas are protected for the Inyala by the government. And they're, the resource is managed by the outfitters here. That's why the, the male we got is a very old, past his breeding time, past his prime time male. He's 13 to 14 years old. This area, if it's preserved, will allow the Inyala to continue to be a great resource for this country. It's only found here. You have to come to Ethiopia to see them, to hunt them, and to enjoy them. And we're here to make sure that the people here continue with the sustained use of the Inyala, giving it value, protecting it, protecting its habitat, conserving both its habitat and the Inyala, and protecting it against exploitation by the 80 plus million people here in a population that's ex exploding and demanding agricultural use of all this land. In the next episode of The Ultimate Shot, we shall again travel to Europe. We will be there for a bullfight. We will then move to the hunting grounds and sneak in on roaring red deer, test ourselves with fast running roe deer, and then have the unique opportunity to witness the shooting of the new world record Spanish feral goat. Don't miss this segment of The Ultimate Shot. Be there as we experience some of the unique hunting opportunities that Spain has to offer.